The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with an exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. The circus means fun for young folks and old. But under the big top, you see only a part of the story. The real drama comes behind the scenes, where 500 people live as one family, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on Earth. This master of the big cats has journeyed to Africa and India, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. This story is one of Clyde's favorites. He calls it Beauty and the Beasts. Miss Harriet Evans was young, small, and blonde. Faithful to her European ancestry, she'd been studying for the ballet while earning her keep as a cabaret dancer. When depression hit the dancing field, she applied for a job with a circus that featured my wild animal act and was promptly hired. On her first day with the circus, the famous clown Red Baxter was showing her around the ground. Now, Miss Evans, this is the wild animal section. Clyde Beatty's the boss here. Clyde Beatty? Is he that man who beats and whips those poor animals? <laughs> ah, the poor animals you refer to are treated better and live longer here than they do in the jungle. Well, I think it's just terrible to keep the poor things caged up. Uh, after you've been with us a while, you'll discover how mistaken you are. Oh, by the way, Clyde Beatty's the big shot on this show, so I wouldn't make a play for him. Don't worry. Why should I want to associate with an ogre like him? Ah. <laughs> uh, you may find you're mistaken about that, too, Miss Evans. Well, if I do, you and Mr. Beatty will discover he can't push me around like he does those helpless beasts of his. You're listening to The Clyde Beatty Show. And now, back to Beauty and the Beasts, an exciting adventure from the life of that master of thrills, Clyde Beatty. As Red Baxter promised, Harriet Evans found that she was mistaken about the well-being of performing animals. Also, she learned that Clyde Beatty wasn't an ogre. For they met, they became friends, and then they, well, they fell in love. Yes, Harriet Evans and I were soon married. It didn't take my wife long to discover that an animal trainer's home life is almost as unorthodox as his day's work. It said a woman's place is in the kitchen. But when that kitchen contains a lion cub weighing over 100 pounds and still growing, well, <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't have been surprised to find my lady not content to darn socks or whip up souffles. From the first, Harriet loved animals. She spent more and more time out in the cat barns watching me work my pets. And then one day she said, Clyde, I want an animal act. What? <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> you, you're just not the type. What exactly does that mean? <laughs> well, you're slim, you're, you're fragile, you're short. Well, you're no man mountain yourself. Well, now that's different. Why? Well. Well? Look here, Harriet, you're not serious, are you? Oh, I most certainly am. If you think I'm content to sit around stuffy hotel rooms, smoky pullmans, and dusty circus wagons, while you're having all the fun, Clyde Beatty, you're very much mistaken. <laughs> fun? Working in a cage with 54 lions and tigers breathing down your back, you call that fun? No. Then why do you do it? Because it's... it's... Fun? Yeah, no, be because it's my job. And because you'd be bored to death doing anything else. But, Harriet, you don't weigh enough to swing one of my chairs, let alone hold back a ferocious cat with it. I weigh almost 100 pounds. Yeah, wringing wet and after a 12-course dinner. Well, your 100 pounds is only a sixth of Nero's weight. If that top mounter ever charged Why, you... Why, Beatty, you told me yourself, it requires skill, not brawn, to train animals. It's ridiculous. The idea's out. Very well. Then I'll go back to work on my dancing routine. Absolutely not. Then give me an animal act. I'm tired of loafing. No. If you don't, I'll return to dance. I'm not going to let you dance publicly anymore. You're being unreasonable. I'm being sensitive. I won the first round, or so I thought. An animal trainer's life depends upon his complete knowledge of the thinking processes of his charges. However, animal trainers are merely men and with no more ability than other men to fathom the female of the species. I was certain my arguments had turned Harriet from her purpose, and although she kept on badgering, 
I was confident she wasn't wearing down my resistance. Then one day, at Peru, Indiana Quarter, she sprang a more subtle attack. Oh, Hank, let in the young lions. Right, Mr. Beatty. Which ones you want to work first? Run in all nine. I'm promoting them to second grade. Yes, sir. Here they come. Hey, Roger. Get in there, Bobby. Come on, you pet. Come on, get in there. How about me going in there with you? Honey, you know my rule is never to take anybody in the cage. I've seen you do it. Only a few times. It's just too risky. Maybe if you let me once, I'll stop pestering you. Well, maybe in that case it'd be worth it. Come on. At last. Step into the safety cage with me. I'm right behind you. See that you stay there. Now, look, you do just as I say. Here, you take this long stick, and when we go in and I advance toward the cats, you follow exactly in my tracks. Uh, yes, Clark. No matter how courageous you are, you're temporarily terror-stricken the first time in the big cage. It's impossible, standing safely outside, to realize how different it is actually facing the beasts. Outside, the cats pay no attention to you. Inside, they forget the trainer to glare at you. With a shudder, you realize they now have no interest in the one you depend upon to protect you. They don't want him, they want you. Harriet reacted like everyone else. She began to shake the moment we entered the big cage. When the lions turned their gaze from me to her, she seemed ready to scream. Her eyes popped open with a wild look. I called to her over my shoulder. Anything wrong? Uh, 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 the the boy closed the window. It... It's so cold in here. I'm not cold. Well, well I am. I'm freezing. <laughs> you had enough? What bright is leaping at us. It's all right. Back, Bobby. Back. Oh, how, how long have we been in here? About a minute. Seems like an hour. Let's get out of here. So, having proved to my wife I couldn't possibly let her have a wild animal act, a few months later, I let her have one. There were three lions and three tigers in the first act I planned for Harriet. As I explained to her... Now, Harriet, there's no sense in doing an act with just lions or an act with just tigers like any woman might do. You're the boss, Clyde. Yeah, so I found out. <laughs> Nobody using the name of Beatty is going to have a mediocre act. So you're really in for it. Yes, my lord and master. Now, you realize what it means to mix natural enemies in the same arena? I do. Bring on the beast. Not so fast, my lovely. You've got a long way to go before you even get near a cat. Oh? That mass of steel bars isn't just a cage for wild animals. It's also a place where the trainer's in prison. I see. Well, let in the cat. Uh-uh. A cat? Nope. I thought you were teaching me to be a trainer. Right. But for weeks, you're going to do nothing but diagram the arena and memorize every inch of it. How exciting. Then you're going to practice dancing. Dancing? Yes, around an arena filled with props. How long does this go on? Till you can do it blindfolded and not touch a single piece of equipment. Fine. I want to train animals. You make me study architecture and ballet. Correct. Because someday in an arena filled with snarling lions and tigers, that's going to save your life. Back. Back. Slowly. Steady. No, don't glance over your shoulder. Now, step, step, step. Count your way back to the safety cage. Clyde, is that five or six? Miscount with the cats in here and it'll be just too bad. Now, back, back. Remember the pedestals. Slow, easy, easy, easy. Hank, let in that tiger. Here she comes, Mr. Beatty. All right, Harriet, now this is it, your first cat. Now, face it, I'll be right behind you. Oh, he's bounding out of the tunnel. Dash right up. Crack your whip. Bluff him to a standstill. Look out! She's lost her footing! I backed him off. Quick, Harry, on your feet. Oh, thanks. Clumsy of me to trip. There's no time for apologies. Go on, cue him, cue him. Up! Up! Tap the pedestal with a whip button. Clyde! Clyde, look! He's climbing up onto the pedestal. He's sitting there, just like a kitten. That's a wonder he didn't spot you for a fake, the way you commanded him with that nervous soprano of yours. I did it! I did it! Well, today we work all six of the cats. Do, do you think I'm ready? You're ready. Just don't be nervous. If I said I wasn't, I'd be lying. Well, you're doing fine. Don't worry about it. Clyde, whatever you do, don't leave me. I'll be right here. All right, Hank, let the critters in. Right. Back. 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 When you get them pyramided, make Raja climb down and roll the big ball across the arena. All right. Raja. Raja. Down, Raja. 
boss. You're going to leave Miss Beatty in there alone? She'll be all right. She's so busy with those cats, she doesn't even know I slipped out of the arena. I don't know. I hope she doesn't freeze when she finds out you're not in the cage. Don't worry. Look, Hank. She's cued Raja onto the ball. Good girl. Ain't that a picture? Just a slip of a girl standing up to that big striped cat. Oh, oh, Roger's slipping. That heavy ball's getting away from the tiger. It's rolling crazy. It's going to hit Denver's pedestal. If it does, those two cats will mix it. Denver's leaning off of her pedestal. If Miss Beatty keeps backing up to her, she'll get clawed. She sees I'm not there. Frozen in her tracks. Move, Harriet. Move. Roger's going to spring. Give me that plug. Let me in there. <laughs> We'll bring you the thrilling second act of the Clyde Beatty Show in just a moment. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, act two of Beauty and the Beast, a true-to-life story from the exciting adventures of Clyde Beatty. Harriet, Clyde Beatty's beautiful wife, finally prevailed upon him to give her an animal act. After months of arduous training, Clyde felt she was ready to face her charges alone. He slipped out of the cage, and when she discovered his absence, she froze. Seeing his wife trapped between charging animals, Clyde Beatty dashed into the big cage to save her. I grabbed a short club and dashed into the arena. Raja was rolling the ball toward Denver, and the lion was reaching far out to strike at the tiger. Harriet was between them. Just as the huge ball was about to run her down, she leaped to one side and the ball brushed past her. Raja sprang at Denver's throat. Harriet, move around that pedestal. Watch those lions behind you. They might gang up on Raja. All right. All right. Bring your club. I'll be springing at you. There's a club for you, Bobby. And Denver has one for you. Please just jump from the stand. He's between me and the safety cage. Use your gun. Blank him with it. That it. It moves out of the way. All right, clear out. Clear out. Hurry before the others get out of hand. Oh, you made it, man. Oh, yes, but I don't know how. It's quite all right. He's got them two cats apart. He'll probably be able to control them now. So I've got to open the gates quick so we can run them into the tunnel. Rattle the chute, Hank. Yeah. They're ready to come out. Oh, Clyde. Clyde, are you all right? Yeah. Are you? I'm a little nervous. I, I, I'm not so calm myself. I, uh... uh I guess I made a few mistakes. A few? You made every one in the book. Why didn't you tell me you were going to leave the arena? When I saw what happened, I, I wished I had. But well, that's no excuse for letting yourself get cornered. Oh, I was flustered. We worked on that point for months. It won't happen again. That's right. It won't happen again. I, I don't like the way you said that. Look, my dear. You'll never make an animal trader. Oh, no? You just wait and see. <laughs> Harriet tried so desperately hard that, well, a few days later, she made her debut before an audience. I stood in the safety cage, ready if she got in trouble, and I was mighty proud. I'd been pretty tough with her, but she'd come along wonderfully. With her shoulder-length blonde hair, white costume, and boots, she gave my animal section some real beauty for a change. A long time later, having emerged from many crucial tussles with the cats, Harriet became an established trainer. One evening, we were dining with the circus manager, Grant Williamson, and as usual, I was bragging about my lovely pupil. Yes, sir, Grant. Harriet's the only student I ever had, and she's terrific. Well, maybe you better open a school, Clyde. Oh, no, no, no. I'll never have another pupil. No, no other pupil could possibly turn out so well. Eh? I'll have to agree with you on that. <laughs> I love hearing you boys praise me. But don't forget, I've never gone into the arena without Clyde in the safety cage to give me moral support. Ah, you don't need me there anymore? Uh, this is just a secret between the three of us. But if Clyde wasn't there, I couldn't go in. Nonsense. You're tiny, you haven't had much experience, you're subject to nervousness, but you're the only woman who ever worked a large group of mixed cats. Lady, you're unique. Why, Clyde, baby, don't you remember? You told me I'd never make an animal trainer. <clears throat> uh, pass the mustard to somebody. i got to eat those words again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously, 
I'm still afraid when I go in the arena. Shh, shh, shh. So am I. But as long as the cats don't find out, we'll be okay. Just the same. I'd never go on without you. I, uh, I don't want to change the subject, Clyde, but what about that new act you mentioned to me? Well, it's, uh, it's one I've been thinking about for years. Don't tell me you're adding more animals to your act. No, no, that isn't it. Oh, that's good. Fifty-four lions and tigers in a 32-foot arena is enough. Uh, didn't I understand you to say this act is for Harriet? That's right. For me? What is it? You run an elephant around the arena with a lion and a tiger riding side by side on its back. Oh, that sounds easy. Oh, it does, huh? Well, maybe you don't realize you'll be handling three natural enemies instead of two. Don't forget they'll be in motion. Cats hate that. Besides, they'll be practically touching each other every minute. Hmm. I see what you mean. It would be a sensational act. It's never been done. On second thought, I can see how difficult it would be. But I can do it. Great. Little lady, consider yourself signed up. Oh, uh, Clyde, Clyde, I yeah. just got word from Milwaukee. The opening's a solid sellout. Well, that's fine. We'll be ready. Uh, everything set for rehearsal? All set. But why all the reporters and newsreel men? I've never seen so many just for a rehearsal. Well, the publicity boys made a big pitch about Harriet's new act. They're uh, anticipating a baptism of fire for him. Oh, I don't know about that. But she'll sure give him a show. I'm all ready, Clyde. Oh, hello, Grant. You here to cheer or just count in the house? Now, if you aren't the loveliest sight I've ever seen in any circus arena, I'll eat the center pole. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you, Mr. Williamson. Oh, the sight of you in that costume is worth the price of admission. Enough of that. But Clyde, she's beautiful. If the customers want to see pretty girls, they can go to the Follies. We got an animal act to perform. That's right, slave driver. The ringmaster's ready to announce you. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention is directed to the steel arena. Presenting the newest and most sensational wild animal act ever performed by a woman. You ready, honey? Featuring I'm ready. Anime, the huge Tell me, are you nervous? Plenty. Especially with all those cameras out there. How oh, in the cage, you'll forget them. You'll stand by. I'll be in a safety cage. The Royal Vegetable Tiger. Trained and presented by the greatest woman animal trainer of all time. The one and only... Bridget Hughes, good luck. Harriet Beatty. Well, there she goes. Oh, she'll be great. After all the work you two put into this act, it can't miss. I hope. Hey, there comes the elephant. This is it. All right, Hank, run the tiger in. Look at her out there. She's wonderful. Now, the lion, Hank. Harriet, you were wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, when anime started to shake and Primba and Simba fell off, I thought they were going to land on us. So did I. If you hadn't rushed in then, Clyde, I don't know what would have happened. Uh, what made the elephant do that? Uh, she's a smart one. She knows the act calls for her to ride the cats around the arena just once. When the cameraman asked for a retake, anime got stubborn. She rumbled like an earthquake. I was scared to death. Well, that won't happen when we open in Milwaukee. If it does, you just better be standing by in that safety cage. <laughs> Hello? Mr. Williamson, please. Uh, Williamson speaking. Oh. Is this Harriet? Yes. You sound worried. Something wrong? Clyde's worse. His temperature is up to 102. Oh, that's terrible. Has the doctor been there? Yes. And he said Clyde can't go on tonight. What? But the opening, the house is sold out. That's too bad. Clyde just can't make it. Well, now, wait. I I'll be right over. In the meantime, you tell Clyde. <laughs> Sorry, Grant. Looks like I fouled up the work. <sighs> what do we do? What do we do? All those tickets sold, all that money, and... Give them their money back. Oh, uh, there must be something less desperate than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. I've got an idea. Uh, if your idea is what I think it is, I say no. This is an emergency, Clyde. I must do the act. And how? Now, look here. The show must go on and all that, you know. Look, you haven't worked those cats for a long time. They'd be tough to handle. And after doing the elephant act, you'd... No, no, I just won't allow it. I could do it, Clyde. I know I could. Well, who'd we put in the safety cage? Hank. 
Hank's a good cage boy, but he'd never go into the arena if you got in trouble. I won't get in trouble. And tough old Jerry will give you plenty of trouble. That shifty-eyed old thing. I'd just stare him down. Jerry's a dangerous cat. Then I'll take him out of the act. Now, don't be silly. You've got to have a lion Jerry's size in there or the act won't look good. Then you want me to leave him in? I didn't say that. Are you arguing for or against? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. This, this always happens to me. Every time I present a logical argument, I, I always get overruled. So, with a murderous Jerry in her cast, Harriet chose to undertake the Milwaukee opening without me in the safety cage. Later, I learned the performance had gone far from quietly. The elephant act went beautifully, but then came the mixed cast. At first, hard-boiled Jerry had kept his eyes riveted on Hank in the safety cage. Toward the end, though, Jerry's curiosity evaporated. He leaned over his pedestal and made a pass at Frankie just below him. Frankie, enraged, slapped hard at Jerry, missed, and sprang to the floor. He immediately reared up and invited Jerry down, and Jerry accepted the invitation. To the horror of the audience, Harriet found herself between the two enormous cats. The vast crowd gasped, then sat in hushed, expectant silence. Pivoting quickly toward Frankie, Harriet brought her whip down on the tiger's strike back. She whirled around to Jerry and stared into his shifting eyes. Unable to hold her gaze, he backed up a step. In that moment of reprieve, she glanced at Hank. He stood rooted to the ground in the safety cage. She realized there'd be no help from that quarter. That instant, Jerry sprang. One of his paws ticked Harriet's hand as he whooshed past her. Frankie met the lion's attack, and they locked in mortal combat as the crowd roared. <laughs> Harriet fired a round of blanks and dashed into the blur of swinging claws. Finally, Hank unfroze enough to toss a long stick through the bars. Harriet caught it. And throwing her chair up to protect her face, she belabored the animals with such fury that the tiger was forced to drop his hold and back off. Then down, down, again and again came the stick on Jerry's skull. Closer and closer she came to him, and when he was inches away, Harriet fixed him with a level, unwavering look. Jerry, the shifty-eyed, couldn't take it. Roaring indignantly, he swung around, and dragging his tail, he shot out of the arena into the tunnel. The act was over. And Harriet got the biggest ovation ever given a woman in any arena. Clyde, I tell you, it was the greatest thing you ever saw. You mean the greatest thing I never saw? <laughs> Harriet was magnificent. Ah, she must be exhausted. You better go back and see if she's all right. Huh? Uh, she was having a massage when I left, but she should be ready to leave by now. When do we eat? I'm sorry. Oh, honey. Oh, my, what a reception. Oh. You boys make me feel like a conquering hero. Well, you are. It was uh, kind of a rough go, wasn't it? Oh, the boys behaved pretty well. Oh, that's a laugh. I've never seen a cat behave worse than that shifty-eyed Jerry. I understand even uh, Primba, Simba, and Anna May gave you trouble. Huh? Well, they got a little excited. Harriet, I'm proud of you. That, that's the most important thing. Until tonight... I felt the satisfaction from doing my own act was the greatest thing I could ever feel. But now... Yes, Clive. Now I know my greatest thrill is your trial. Before we return with a preview of our next Clyde Beatty show, here is a message. Here is a preview of one of Clyde Beatty's most dramatic adventures, Leopard on the Loose. Looks like the captain was wrong last night about the weather. The storm didn't blow over. It's nasty out there. The ship's been pitching like this ever since I woke up. I don't like to see this. Let's get up on deck and see about my spotted beauty. He's a beautiful leopard, all right. I wish he were in a stronger cage. Now, watch yourself. This is slippery. Here. Let me help you with that door. Now, come on. Let's go see if the cage is holding together. I hope the mate did a good job reinforcing it. Clyde, look. The cage lashings are broken. Come on. If that cage starts to slide... There it goes. Harriet, run for it. That leopard's loose. The leopard on the loose! You've just heard a preview from one of the most terrifying incidents in Clyde Beatty's career. You'll hear the whole exciting story of Leopard on the Loose on our next broadcast. 
All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. Beauty and the Beast was written by Frank Hart Tossig. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>